Thank you to Fans Create for helping me create this video. Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back of this teardown lab. You know I like soldering, and this is the soldering iron I used for well over 10 years. I bought quite a few of these handles because the tips used to get welded in and it was cheaper to buy the whole assembly as a spare, but they're pretty good. I don't know what they call them. They've got various numbers, but digital repair system, something like that. Uh, my second favorite was this Portasol Pro Piezo gas soldering iron, which was really handy on the move um, that worked super well uh, and that was replaced by quite a cheap usb one which is in a box i can't be able to get um, but my current uh, soldering iron my current favorite is this ts100 and i think this is the bee's knees it's the best combination of uh, lightweightness however the cable's a bit heavy and it does tend to fall off my desk sometimes even though i made various holders for it um, but yeah so it's not perfect but it's uh, more perfect than the previous ones because it's the one I use the most. Now, I was recently contacted and asked if I would like to try a new soldering iron. And of course I said yes. And uh, this is that soldering iron. It is the Sugon T26. Look, that's a big box. We'll have to cut to an outer shot here of it. Um, but you can see there, boom, T26. It looks very much like the terminator of soldering irons and this uh, looked to me like an iron that would solve some of those problems so i jumped to the chance and said yes sure i will have a look at one of those and i'll share it amongst my people so that we can all decide whether we want one or not uh, so it comes with a little brochure here and that's quite neat isn't it i never expected this sort of packaging this value added packaging in here and that's actually look quite a nice manual nice and slim but we're not going to read that unless we have to you know when i fiddle around and it won't work we'll have to have a look there but let's check it out mm. so the key um factor for me was basically i want an iron with all of the ts100 abilities but i want it to be a more benchy iron so i'm going to put this on my lap and just put all the contents straight on the bench oh my gosh that's so heavy I can barely lift that. Wow, that's a heavy item. Looks like a torch handle there. I think that's what you call them. A power lead with a foreign plug. I'll have to sort that out. Not a big deal, but kind of annoying. I sh maybe I should have really specified where I was and say, hey guys, make sure you got the right plug on. That's okay. And three soldering tips. And actually looking at these already, it's so cute. Look at that. That is tiny. I mean, uh, compared to those, that is a really precision tip. Oh my gosh. That's like a pin on the end of that, that thing. This could be a total game changer for me. This, this could let you work on BGAs and all sorts really up close. Let's have a look at that. Getting uh, distracted there. But look, that's a kind of a, a wedge chisely type tip there. That looks like it could be useful in numerous scenarios. Okay, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just going to unwrap everything and set it all up and then we'll have a look. Like the proverbial Terry's chocolate orange, I am unwrapped. We don't need this lead anymore because I have here a UK spec one. And I just wanted to examine this more because I said it's so heavy. I thought for a second that base was actual metal. But it's not, it's just whatever PSU in here is crazy heavy. Um, I did read somewhere, it did mention that you can remove this base. I suspect it's through removing those two screws. We could have a quick play it. Why don't we while we're here? Seeing as it was something that had been asked before, I did check various reviews and forums of this and that was something that is asked. And the answer was yes. So I'm gonna have a quick go of this, bear with me. Please don't break. Seems definitely too nice to break this thing. Oh no, it's definitely coming apart. So I'm gonna just pop those screws out. Oh, look at that. That's cute. That's a cutie. How far can that go though? 
Yeah, I'm going to be careful. I'm not going to yoink on that because I don't know how to extend that out. But yeah, that's very handy there to be able to actually move that away. Let's pop that back on though and use it as Mother Nature intended. And you're probably wondering, why does it actually have a wire? Well, that was another feature that attracted me, was that sometimes when you're soldering, you want to adjust your soldering uh, temperature profiles, right? That's fine. I think this has presets, which I'm very excited about trying. That's why it has channel one, two, and three, which is cool. But sometimes you just want a bit of a boost because I'm going to hit something with a, and I need a lot of heat. Apparently, if you touch the tip of the soldering iron on that for like, you know, a second, it'll boost it all up for you. So we'll try that momentarily. So there's the uh, iron connector. So you've got five pins there. Quite small pins, like a mini DIN, that's fine. You've got another plug in the back for any earth clamp, which is kind of nice. People do like that. They always, I always get people in the videos going, Earth, oh, you're going to break something because you didn't do an earth. Uh, tell you what, in all my years, I've never really used an earth strap, ever, honestly. So, yeah, if you assure me that earth is so needed and important, then, uh, yeah, I'll take your word for it on that one. Okay, and I don't know if this is included because of the uh, plug here so in fact we've got a meter why not sorry if this is uh, not the uh, type of review you expect you I just hook it up and go how great it is um, no we are we're actually checking stuff out today yep that is actually connected to your earth pin so that's a genuine earth that's handy that could be handy for other things too so I'm going to plug in the mains just to get it out of the way because there is an on off switch on the back and it's currently now off. Let's plug that in, get that out of the way. Okay, probably should check if it says 110 volts, shouldn't I? Um, input 220 volts, that's fine. <laughs> Always worth checking if you find it with a front plug. Now let's choose uh, the tip. I think you've got a basically, I'm going to zoom in so you can see them, but you've got a fine point with a hook. You've got a bladey chisely thing, and then a standard fine point there. Um, and I think I'm going to be using this one. And it may well be uh, something that I'm going to have to check out what other things you can, because also I just noticed all of the case of serial numbers, and because I yunked them all out, I've got no idea which is which. That was not a smart move. <laughs> that was not a smart move at all. But I'm sure the catalogue will show you. Right, I'm guessing it's as simple as just poking it in. And it is. So there's, oh, it's nice and firm. It just goes in nice and easy. And then there's a little click, a very little detent. Look at that. One is going to have to be super cautious with that. That's so fine. And the, the handle is a nice foam. Um, the wire does put a bit of strain on that. And that's why I think it comes with, with this. Look, it's got a little spring on a a spring hook here and I think that's definitely almost positivity positively a cable holder which is so useful that is great you know the amount of times that'll stop uh, irons falling off the bench we really are ready to go now let's turn this bad boy on I'm going to switch it on at the back you can see there it's set to three whoa smoke coming off there right away that is super fast what did you I, I, I <laughs> That was so quick, did you see that? My word. It was seconds to heat up. Okay, so someone's preset this to 300, 350, and 380, which are quite cool. So that, that, that and you can see, if, I, if it's at 380 and I hit 300, you can see how long it takes to shut down. Very, very quick. I think that's probably the benefit of having such a small tip. Now, if you touch the metal, if you see here, do you remember I was saying about that? Let's see how that works. There you go. So how long do you have to touch it for? See, just a tap. If I tap it again, does it go off? Yes. Oh, it beeps as well when you do it, so you know you've done it. One more, come on. So that seemed to boost you about 70 degrees above nominal. Just give a quick 70 degree boost and then up down to set the preset. I don't think there's much more to say on that. That's pretty good. And in fact, it says here, just touch the metal part of the handle with the metal part. <laughs> just touch the metal part of the handle with the metal part of the handle 
Okay, I think it means holder. Um, do not use point head tip. The temperature immediately rises by 80 degrees C for 15 seconds. Oh yeah, no it is. That bit does actually do it. Anyway, right. What else do we have feature-wise? It certainly looks like here in here we have a piece of steel wool. I think, can we open that up? Maybe not. I don't want to poke it too much. But that's the equivalent inside that hole of one of these, which is really great because I'm use, I use these all the time. So just having a built-in one is great. And then I'm guessing there might be a sponge. I'll have a quick look in the packaging in case I've missed that. Like a total numpty, I just found this under my chair. Boink! Just to show you, I left the iron there for a while and it actually turns itself off. So that's kind of cool. Let's see if it wakes up with a... Oh yes, it does. Booyah! Look at that and away it goes. I figure it would be nice to test the iron in a semi-real world scenario. So I have here a... I think it's pretty much just a a uh, practice PCB. I don't think it does anything that you can buy. I'm sure someone sent this to me. In fact, it looks almost like there's semi-useful components in here. So I've got the iron on. Um, let's set it to channel 1, which was the 300 degrees. And I'm just going to place down this IC. And just noted, while I'm playing around here, the display of the iron's gone off because it's gone off. So it's, it's obviously got these power saving modes. It's trying to save that tip, probably. So remember, this iron has never been used at all, so I've not tinned the tips, anything like that. And we're going to attempt to put on the, the SOP16. And I don't have a sponge in it, couldn't find the sponge. I'm just going to make the lead a little bit longer. Okay, I think we're in business here. So it's currently saying it's 300 degrees real temp. Real temp? <laughs> and that tip, that tip is so tiny. I feel like I've got to be really cautious now. It's almost, it's almost too wee. It's almost too wee now. And I'm just trying to align that IC, and that IC is aligned well enough. Um, so I use a much bigger tip, obviously, and I, I do drag soldering and all sorts of tricks like that. This one. I'm not really convinced this is the tip for that kind of work. This is such a precision thing. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap it for that big chisely blade. The blade is in. It's like a little sword now. Let's tin that thing up. Oh, better turn it back on. Let's give myself the boost. I want the boost. So I'm going to tin that. Oh, that's looking good. And it was a bit tinned, actually. I remember it distinctly. <laughs> you can hear it ticking away every time I clean it. Like, literally, when I put it in the cleaning hole, it's operating that boost mode. So, uh, I'm not sure why they've grounded everything to that. Oh, but that's fine. It could be useful. Okay, let's have a look. Um, I might just put a tiniest amount of flux here as well. There we go never used one of these. I think these are the ones that people have recommended to me in the past for a multitude of soldering jobs. Um, I certainly wouldn't complain about it, but I'm not sure I'm using it right. Let me turn it this way. I kind of feel, because I've got a bridge there, I probably want to do it in a different way. There we go. <laughs> that is a bad soldering job. It's part of the reason also is this leaded, um, sorry, unleaded solder I'm using is so thick. It's absolutely crazy thick. Oh my word though, that. I've never tried that before. That's a good technique. You can put the blade in between the IC legs and just feed the solder into the side of the bloody blade. That's cool. That works real well. That's definitely better than what I was doing on the other side. Um, I might just have to remove that and try again. Let's let's remove it and try again. A bit of this is the worst braid known to man. It just doesn't have the pulling power of other braids. So I'm not seeing a massive thermal mass on this iron. That's the uh, probably one of the 
more downsides on it, but this is definitely a precision rework iron. It's just not brute force and ignorance that I'm uh, usually used to. And I think if I took care when I was making those joints in the first place, I wouldn't have this problem. But that is okay. Right, let's try something else, shall we? So it might be likely in a project that you've got some surface mount resistors to place. That's not particularly uncommon. Um, so I'm going to try again with that same wedgy tape shaped tip, chisel. Chisel, that's the right word, isn't it? It's more like a chisel. So let's go for it. So what size? I'm not quite sure on the size of these. Let's go for that. I just pick up the resistor. And then in it goes. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not complaining about that. So let's say we're going to do a batch of three more in one in quick succession there. I might put this I'm going to click channel two, which was 350 degrees C. So I'm going to put a bit more heat into this because I want that thermal load on it. I don't want it just to cool down instantly. And let's see if that behaves a bit better. You've got to really tune these up to the sort of solder and what you're doing. We'll work it out. Not too bad. So I'm getting a little peak, a little spike on the end of the solder. I'm not sure if you can just see that. See it there? Little... My view, that's normally because it's running a bit cool, but you probably could just alleviate that with some flux. In fact, let's just keep everything the same. Put some flux on this side. Big wad of flux, actually. Didn't intend that much flux, but that's fine. Yeah, that's fine now. In fact, I'm just going to touch up the other ones. Ah, okay. Well, that's convincing too. It's this little diode area. So ping me on Discord and I'll send you this test board because I'm not going to finish it. If you want some practice, this practice board, just let me know or comment down below. But I will say, if you want to DM me your address if you're a winner, It'll have to be on Discord though. That's absolutely fine. Look at that, that went really well. And I'm going to do the other side. Oh, this is a revelation of tip. I'm going to get more of these. I'm going to see where to get some of Amazon, I suspect. So there you go. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to just give it a little wipe and show you what it looks like. Before I do that, I just want to show you this feature. It's so good. So I was just leaving the iron like this and going, why is it flopping around? Because that's my traditional move. But actually, this is like a jack almost grip. So look, push it in. Look at that. Nothing is going to shake that out. That is so good. The amount of times I've had irons flip out and burn me. Woohoo! I'm liking this, Sugon. So there you have it now. I will say my resistors are a little bit heavy laden with solder, but that's not a problem. Um, but everything else looks absolutely spot on. That was a very pleasing experience indeed. Thank you for watching the video. This is the next day. I've actually used the Sugon T26 in quite a few real life projects in the intervening time, and I am very pleased with the results. This is gonna be my daily driver. I think I'll be retiring some of my older sol soldering stations so that I can make room and shuffle things around. But as promised, there is a uh, benefit to you guys. If you fancy uh, anything that Fans Create sell, especially the Sugon T26, you can go to their website at fanscreate.com and in the shopping basket, just enter the back office as the coupon code and you will receive a healthy discount. So let me know how you get on with that. Hopefully you'll be as happy as I am. And as ever, thank you for watching.